Hello, this is Cityscape, a regular vodcast featuring people, place, and ideas in Impact Livonia. I'm Dan West with the Livonia Chamber of Commerce. There are only four public Japanese-English immersion elementary schools in the country, and one of them we will see today because it's located right here in Livonia. The Niji Iro Japanese Immersion Elementary School serves some 250 students from grades kindergarten to sixth grade, and it offers two distinct Japanese educational disciplines in addition to the Michigan Common Core curriculum. Niji Iro is Japanese for rainbow colors. Livonia Public Schools established a school program in 2014. About a third of the students are native Japanese, about a third are American native with some Japanese ancestry, and the other third have no Japanese connection but their parents desire the multicultural experience for their children. Located in a neighborhood off of Newburgh near Seven Mile, the school serves students who live in Livonia, Novi, Farmington Hills, and several other communities across southeastern Michigan. With a specialized staff and teachers known as sensei and high parent participation, Niji Iro provides a unique experience for students, which includes traditional Japanese celebration, such as Mochi Suku for New Year and Aki Matsuri for the Harvest Festival. We are now joined today by Niji Iro Principal Lawrence DeLuca. Lawrence, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me, it's great. So, Lawrence, tell us what it's like to uh, be involved in a multicultural school such as this. It's amazing. I feel very blessed to be here. I've, I've been the principal at several different schools. But I've never been in a school that is, has such dedicated staff and families. Uh, when we have events here with a school of about 250 students, we will get 60 to 70 parent volunteers coming to the events, helping out. I mean, they're, they're wonderful. And the staff here is really incredibly dedicated. Uh, you know, we have an amazing staff. All of our Japanese teachers are bilingual. Uh, a good handful of our English teachers are as well. Mm -hmm. And so to see these teachers that are really committed to our school and to the curriculum, it's a wonderful place to be. I couldn't imagine being anywhere else. Can you explain to us how the American native classrooms operate and the Japanese native classrooms work? Sure, so in the immersion program, it's 50-50 immersion. So mm -hmm. half of the day is in English, half the day is in Japanese. And so what's really unique about our school, so as, as Aniki mentioned, you know, there are four, four programs in the country that are Japanese English immersion schools, but we're the only one, as far as I know, that uses Japanese curriculum in addition to the English or the American cur curriculum. So our students are getting the same Japanese curriculum that s students in Japan would get. And, and we also use a Japanese uh, program for math as well. So it's really, we're really one of a kind. This is a very, very unique school like none other. Mm -hmm. And so when the students are here, they'll have, they'll basically go back and forth between Japanese and English classes during the day. And so on one day they might have math in English and then the following day they'll have in Japanese, then again in English, then again in Japanese. And so during the day, they're really going back and forth between, between mm -hmm. both. And when they're in those classes, they're immersed in that language. So if it's English time, they're speaking English for the entire period. And if it's Japanese time, they're speaking Japanese for the entire period. Lawrence, thank you for the time today. I appreciate it. Uh, you're welcome. Thank you. We are now joined by Ai Sensei, who is a music instructor here. Um, she's a native of Japan, moved here 20 years ago, and has been teaching here at Niji Iro for the last nine years. Ai, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me today. Share with us the experience of teaching and um, American and Japanese mm -hmm. native children and watching them uh, mingle, connect, and work together. Um, it's been an amazing experience for me because I grew up in Japan, mm -hmm. being surrounded only by like Japanese native speakers. And here, um, as a teacher, I've seen like lots of students has multiple or diverse backgrounds, which is amazing too. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, as a music teacher, it's becoming a um, like very exciting role here because music is kind of universal language and which I believe that I can access to um, students knowledge through the music singing dancing and then like clapping creating music and getting to know them is being wonderful now is all the music you're instructing Japanese based so all your students are performing the uh, tr uh, traditional Japanese type music? Yes, yeah, yes. And then sometimes I do the songs in English, but translated in Japanese. Okay. For example, um, Country Road mm -hmm. by John Denver. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Kids sing both English and Japanese. So very, very cool, very yeah. cool. 
with the festival celebrations that they do here at the school, what role do you play in that for the Harvest Festival and mm -hmm. then the, um, the coming up uh, field day that's coming up? And I know there's a Japanese term for those festivals. What do you do for those? Uh, I usually incorporate, incorporate like um, the history of the event, mm -hmm. how we celebrate and then how currently we celebrate the event. So it's been like a little bit change because mm -hmm. of like our modern society. Yeah. But I usually show them how we celebrate in Japan, like via video or picture book or story. Mm -hmm. Then uh, I teach them like music or songs or even like rhyming. Okay. So mm -hmm. awesome. Well, I thank you very much for your time and uh, best of luck with the school year. Thank you very much. We're now joined by Rebecca Lank who um, had two daughters complete the program here at Nijiro and has a son currently in the program. Rebecca, thank you for joining us today. Thanks for having me. Um, you bring your kid here from, uh, your, your youngest son here from Canton. Tell us why you made the decision to bring your, your children to this school. Yeah, so um, I felt confident that they would have the fundamentals here, mm -hmm. right? Like strong math, strong science, strong English, all that sort of thing. And then I also really loved that there was a bilingual aspect, right? So they learn everything in English and in Japanese. And not only did they learn a second language, but they really do learn like a second culture. So, you know, here we celebrate a lot of Japanese holidays. They celebrate Undokai and they celebrate Mochitsuki. And my children would make fun of me for my bad pronunciation. <laughs> but uh, but they, they really is like a cross culture and a cross language, mm -hmm. you know, uh, activities going on here. And that, I, mm -hmm. I just felt like that was really attractive and it was really great for kids developing, mm -hmm. you know? So. Now your, your two daughters um, completed the program here. They're now sophomores in high school. Correct. Tell us what the Japanese background and the education they got here is doing for them now in high school. Yeah, so it's funny. It, um, I think one, it sort of awakened an interest in them in other cultures and in other languages, right? So that, that's kind mm -hmm. of there, and I feel like that's part of them now, uh, is they're just really deeply interested in learning about other places, other people, other languages. And then additionally, learning another language, mm -hmm. especially one like Spanish or French, is really pretty simple at this point, right? Because they're used to the process of learning a second language. And then I feel like they also got from being here, you know, they do spend half their day in English and half their day in Japanese. And so it's a real challenge. And so when they went to high school, I feel like they just weren't, they, I don't want to say they weren't challenged, they were, but I guess I felt like they felt confident they could achieve. You know, they felt confident that they could succeed because they had already kind of experienced a challenging educational background. So yeah, they, they were very happy with their time here. I was very happy with their time here. Well, Rebecca, thank you for your time today. Thank I you appreciate so much. It. Yeah.